Let's look into the Bible quickly. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. So the question is, how do you stay positive? And, and the reason I'm saying this and we're praying or we're looking at this teaching is because if you've been a Christian for some time, <laughs> you will have had the opportunity where you had prayed about something and you had to wait. And sometimes we become extremely negative and we eventually lose everything. So I, I want to say, so how do I stay positive? So I, I'm praying. So I'm praying particularly about this situation and it's gone on for one year and there's been no change. How do I stay positive? I'm praying for my child. How do I stay positive? I, I'm praying for a medical situation. I prayed for the past three years. How do I stay positive? positive so let's look at this quickly hebrews chapter 10 in verse 35 hebrews chapter 10 verse 35 the bible says this cast not therefore your confidence which has great recompense of reward why why do you throw away your confidence verse 36 says to us for you have need of patience that after you've done the will of god you might receive what the promise so he says look at what it says this, this is the part of faith that is hardly preached that after you've done what you should do stand in faith there is a place of patience he says after you've done the will of god you have the need of patience that you might receive so watch this the reason why a lot of people do not receive the reason is simple. The reason is this. Because they, they exercise their faith, but there is no patience. And sometimes the best way to describe faith and patience is a coin. On one side of the coin is faith. On the other side of the coin is patience. So they pray for one month. And when it's not done in one month, Lord, I'm tired. So they do it for three months and they're exhausted. But that's not how faith works. It says it's faith and patience. So maybe, maybe what you're praying for, it's some kind of approval. You must know that it's faith and patience. See what it says here. He says, after you've done the will of God, after you've done the confession, after you've your hands have been laid on you, after you've done the prayer of agreement, after you've done the binding and the loosing, he says, you have need of patience. Look at your neighbor and say, you need some patience. Why? That you might receive the promise of God. Let, let's look at another scripture that's very challenging here. Ephesians, quickly, chapter 6 in verse 13. Ephesians chapter 6. Because some people say to me, I've done everything, I'm tired. What should I do next? This is what you should do next. I, I've done everything, I'm tired for, for a breakthrough. What should I? I've done everything. Someone says, I've tried to break this addiction. What do I do next? Someone says, I've done everything and it's not working for marriage. What do I do next? See what the Bible says. Ephesians Ephesians 6 verse, verse 13. See what it says here. The Bible says this. He says, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, wherein you are able to withstand in the evil day. Then he says this, everybody read with me, one to go. And what? He says, having done all to stand, what do you do? He said, you stand. He said, there is a time in your faith that you just stand. You just say, I've done everything. The next thing to do is just to stand. The next thing to do is just to keep thanking God. The next thing to do is just to keep confessing the word of God. The next thing to do is just to put my hands towards heaven and tell God, I cast all my cares on you because you care for me. The next thing to do is just to give glory to God. The next verse says, haven't done, it says, haven't done all to stand. It says, stand. The next verse says, stand therefore he says haven't done all to stand so three stands haven't done all to stand stand then he says what stand therefore that means if you are tired of standing stand then when you are tired of standing stand therefore the major problem with faith is this people quit a lot ahead of time 
And when people quit, they don't even know, you know they start quit there. Because you can still be believing, but you've gone negative. I, I'll give an example. And, you know, this is one of the very powerful things. And um, um, Chantel said this last week, you know, as she was talking about victories. She said, one of the most important things you're afraid to do for you is this. Once you can have your first victory, you can have a reference point that God did this for me. He said that you will hold on to it. I, I will tell you something. When our church started, we were in a place called Spoon Feeders. We wanted to buy the first property. We had such many properties, some were beyond in price, some were, you know, that kind of thing. We eventually sold this property. It was a hundred and something million that time. You know, that's going to be a lot of money right now. You know, so we went, we couldn't even afford it. We wanted a bank to help us bankroll some part of it. We kind of agreed. And um, we sit, sat down and agreed formally. The agreement was that by Monday or Tuesday, we will come and sort out the finances. We will make the transfer and all of that. Then on Sunday evening, that was on Friday, I got home. <laughs> then my wife said to me that, oh, this property you want to buy, can we even go and look at it? Let me show me the property before everybody gets to see it. I said, oh, why not? So we drove from my house and got there. And when we got there, I saw security guards. Very, I think it was halogen. And I said, oh, wow, what are you guys doing here? They said, oh, a certain bank had bought the property. I felt devastated. I, I went back, I called the people that were going to sell it to us, and the person said, it's really beyond me. And what it was really saying was that because it was a bank, they could inflate the amount, and everybody could make a bigger share, that kind of thing. And there was no way you could compete in buying a property with a bank. I felt so, I felt so, I felt so down. I went to see one of my friends, and when I went to see one of my friends, he said to me, he said, listen to what he told me. And this is the experience of someone that had faith. He said, from my experience, once you get to this down point, the next property is yours. I said, amen. Because you, you know how they will encourage you. I said, amen. I said, amen. And I, and I said to God, he said, the reason why is this. He said, it's at your downmost part. When you, have thrown, when you are there, he said, he says, this is what God told Paul. He says, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. So sometimes you have to come to a place where you are weak. This one you are doing, I'm a hot girl, I'm intelligent, I'm a fine. I will get husband. You will not find that way. Once you come to a place where your intelligence and beauty cannot get you, you are now humble. The strength of Jehovah will be made manifest. Are you getting me? Are you, do you understand it? Paul said this. Paul, say, Paul says, let me show you quickly. <laughs> you, uh, so that you can see what I'm saying. Oh, wow. Second Kings. Um, Second Corinthians, rather. Chapter 12. Paul said this. Verse, verse 8. He said, this thing I besought the Lord three times, that it may depart from me. He had the problem. He says in verse 9, and God said to me, my grace is sufficient for thee. He says, when he says grace, it means my ability, power is sufficient. How does it work? He says my strength, when he says my strength, my power comes into perfection, comes into total display in your weakness. He says when you are strong, there can't be display of power because you will rest in yourself. So when you are weak, you will rest upon him and there will be a total display of that power. When my friend, and I'm, I understand this though. When, see, once that office are looking for contract and approval, if you know the MD, you will not pray. Your prayer will be official. Father, thank you because this is done. I know that you've worked it out in Jesus' name. Because you know the MD, and he has told you he will give it to you. But the day you got there, and they told you they transferred the MD yesterday. Malay, Shaba, Laba, Abaya, Barado. <laughs> You, you, you say, ah, I've missed NLP and going back. The reason why is that you understand that you have found your place in a weak place. So when he told me that, I said, okay. You know, I went back home. There's a psalm I used to pray for property, Psalm 44. I began to pray. A few days after, someone just said to me, there's another property. And I went to see it. I was not even too excited. And, and this is a place of staying. This is a place where you have to be positive. Because by the time that thing happened, it taken a toll on my emotion. Where I didn't want to trust again. 
So I went to see this property. The good thing is that, long and short, the property was bigger than the older one that we saw. It was cheaper than what we saw. Then the most significant thing, it was five minutes walk from our from our church. That means we don't have to say that we moved or lost people because you just walk. When that happened, I said, Lord, I see it. I see it. I see it. Why am I telling you this? We've been praying for another property here in the Lekki Church. I've seen properties. Then I saw one property at Oniru. When I saw the property, fantastic. The man, very good, big property. The man even told me, he said that, I give you a five years payment lease. I said, my God, this is the hand. Five years payment lease in this Nigeria. Ah, we didn't even ask, so he offered us. He said, I'm a Christian, I'm not to help God's work. I said, this is it. I said, well, ah, this is, we're taking this property. But the challenge was that there was a church there. And the church had a lease for one year plus. So, and it was a pastor I knew. So I went to talk to the pastor. Long and short, the pastor was like, they wanted to buy it. And I don't like when two churches are fighting for something. So I'm like, you know what? But the owner told me that they may not be able to buy it. So I pulled back. Eventually, in the process of pulling back, the owner got upset with the two of us and sold the property to somebody else. I was paid. Not because of the property, because how can someone say pay for five years? It's almost a giveaway. Then I found that property. It was close to some great churches down the road. The, the agent told us, you know, uh, you know, they say, he's not, I don't know the pastor. Our crowd is different. This, I said, no, no, no. You can't put a church just next to another church. And this person is my friend. I said, it's going to become clumsy. I said, we need to respect space. Ah, but it pained me. I went to God in prayer. I said, Lord, these properties I'm leaving, I'm leaving them for one thing. Because I know I'm living for the sake of the body of Christ. I said, you will do your work. The property that God eventually gave us, I cannot, listen to me, if they gave me all the options, I will not look at them again. I will go for that one. Because God has a way of compensating. Are you here? When you think you've lost something, just remember God has a way of compensating. I'm telling you, the way it worked, I would be like, oh, Lord, this is just perfect. So, I'm saying so because there was a lag. And there's a tendency for me to be angry. There's a tendency for me to not be positive. There was a lag. But how do you stay positive? So, the first thing I want to say is this. Why, why exactly is it important for you to stay positive? The first thing is this. If you don't stay positive when there's a delay, you will give Satan a foothold to enter into your desires. I explained this, Daniel chapter 10, verse 12 to 14. Let's look at that quickly. Daniel chapter 10, verse 12 to 14. Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10. Sing it again. Mm. Hallelujah. Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. I'm just mindful of time. <laughs> then he said to me, it says, fear not, Daniel, from, from the first day that you did set in your heart to understand that you said praying, to trust in the self of the Lord, thy words were heard, and I'm come for thy words. Verse 20, 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Pasha withstood me, what? One, one and what? 20 days. So guess what? Between the time that I prayed and the time the angel arrived, how many days? Come on. How many days? 21 days. Question. Was it because God did not answer or because there was a demonic interference? Look at what the Bible says. Go back to verse 12. Let's go back quickly because some of you need to understand why the delay is caused. So, verse 12 says, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day thou didst set your heart to understand and chasten thyself, thy words were heard. That means from the first day he prayed, God answered. But the manifestation took 21 days. Because there was a demonic spirit that held the manifestation. But my focus is not a demonic spirit. My focus is that when there is a demonic delay, how do you win? This is how you win. Look at what the, the next line, the, vex, the verse says. No, no, the verse 12. Just the last line. It says, he says, 
thy words were heard. And I'm come for what? Thy words. This is what he was saying. He said, in the 21 days where there was delay, the reason why I was able to penetrate was because you were saying the right things. Listen to, he says, I didn't come for your prayers. He says, I came for thy words. He says, in the 21 days, you were still saying that the approval is done. God is working on it. I know that I'm pregnant. Thank you, Jesus. I know it is settled. Thank you, Jesus. He says, you did not say negative words. If you had said negative words, there will have been demonic. Because in the realm of the spirit, come quickly, come quickly. Two of you 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 stand here. Maybe someone that is wearing something else should come. One of the other guys should come. Yeah, 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 come. The one that, the guy that acts, yeah. Yeah, come, come. Stand quickly. This was happening. Be tackling him, be tackling him. Tackle him, tackle him. You know, just be tackling him. Just, just, exactly. Just hold like that. Don't go out of the camera's frame. Yeah. So, so watch this. As that was happening in the spirit, the guy in the suit is the angel. The guy in white is the prince of Persia. As Daniel prayed, the angel was coming. The prince of Persia was holding him back. That went on for 21 days. But the question that what made the angel prevail was that in that 21 days, Daniel was speaking the right words. That's why the angel says, he says, the reason why I eventually came was because I came for your words. The problem is this. When you begin to speak wrong and negative words, you begin to empower the demonic spirits. Because in the realm of the spirit, what are currencies? Who are you empowering what you are saying? Are you listening to me? That's why sometimes you will see someone that was healed. Eventually, they lose the healing. Why? Because they began to say the wrong things. So you believe? So during the delay, as you are speaking, guess what? As I'm saying to myself, see, you'll be moving towards me. I say, Father, thank you because it is done. I have the approval. The marriage is settled. My child is healed. As he's saying it, the angel is getting ascendancy. I thank you because it's done. I thank you, Lord, because this is done. All things are worked together for good. I'm not moved by what I say. I'm moved by faith. By faith. You see, the angel was gaining ascendancy because he was speaking the word. I want to ask you, are your what repelling angels or attracting them? Glory to God. Thank you, sir. So you are praying for your marriage, you are praying for your marriage, you are praying for your marriage. You, you just said, I didn't want to understand this marriage again. I'm tired of it. I'm going to leave at any time. You are just inviting demonic spirits. Because words invite spiritual entities. That's why one of the most important, in fact, let's pray. You are going to declare that every negative word I've spoken that is being used as a weapon, by the mercy of God, I neutralize it. Go ahead and pray, everybody. Oh, yes. Every negative word on any contract. Oh, man, Neko, Shavalamante, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, based on the protocol of mercy and grace. Every negative word that I've spoken, that as a collective, in the name of Jesus Christ, let it be neutralized. Karane, Let the mercy, by the protocol of divine mercy and grace, let that word be neutralized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Very powerful, though. One time, I was reading Kenegan's books. And Kenegan was, I mean, if you know Kenegan, the prophet of God, well, went to pray for this man. And I was going to pray for this man. This man was very sick. The man was 40 years old. Kenegan laid hands on him. And Kenegan used to function the healing anointing. When he lays hands on people, it will feel the power of God going to their body and they will be healed. He said, when he laid hands on this man, he felt the power of God going to his body. But before he removed his hand, the power of God returned to his body. Ah. He said he knew the man was going to die because the healing power did not stay in his body. So he went back to God in prayer. He said, Lord, what's wrong with this man? And God told him, certain words have been said that cannot be reversed right now. Ah, Kenegi said, what? He went back to ask his wife, what does your husband say? Oh, he said, my husband always say, my grandfather died at 40. My father died at 40. My older two brothers died at 40. I now die at 40. I know I have short life. I will die at 40. So now that he was 40, although spiritual power was enforced, spiritual laws have been activated by words. That's why parents, you must be careful. This thing you tell your daughter, nobody will marry you. It can become a weapon. 
it can become a because you want to chastise you say nobody mind you say yeah yeah husband it can become a weapon because the bible says in the book of proverbs life and death are in the power of the tongue you must understand that tongues as currencies of the spirit in the spirit realm tongue what my god let me say something nobody should understand this more than africans the reason why is that when you watch african magic how do the juju priests invoke power they just begin to talk they will say this happened to this happened to this because they understand in the spirit that what's our power you that you are a child of God, the same thing you understand. Oh my God. When Satan was going to attack God, you heard about Satan attacking God, right? How did Satan attack God? Did he carry spear? Satan said to God, I will be like you. I will ascend throne. He was attacking by speaking. What did God say? God says, and you shall be dethroned. <laughs> nah. He said, you shall be cast to the base of the earth. It was an exchange of words. Are you getting it? So the first thing you have to understand is this. This is why you remain positive. Because once your word is corroded or polluted, your life is polluted. And many of you, you don't intentionally speak possible about your life. What you speak are negative words. You look at your car. Ah, this car is useless. No wonder it's useless. You, you, because you begin to curse it. When you say curse, you said you cursed it. You wonder why you are paying so much for damage and repair. You cursed it. So the effect of the word is showing. Anybody can die anytime. That's why people die anytime. Because you say anybody can what die anytime. I don't say such things. The Bible says the number of my days I shall fulfill. I shall die in the good old age. I I don't make careless statements. I don't make statements that will put me in trouble because I want to be compassionate. Anybody can die anytime. Anybody like them. But for me, the Bible says, I shall die in a good old age. Father, I thank you because I die in a good old age. Haven't seen my children, grandchildren, and to the next generation. Glory to God. Nothing works in this country. That's why it's not working for you. Nothing works in this country. There are no responsible men to marry. What? That's why you're not married. You have confirmed the prophecy in your life. As you prophesy, the angel agreed. Praise God. I said praise God. So, we began to talk about delays. So, we spoke about delays that... So, when we are negative, we begin to give foothold to demonic spirits. So, some delays are caused by demonic spirits. But some delays are caused by self. They are decisions you've made that causes delay. This is not a matter of Satan. This is not a matter of God. They're just decisions you make. For example, maybe you have to start a company, but you didn't start the company. You don't start that company can cause a delay in your life. Maybe you stay in a relationship that is not working for too long. That could cause a delay in your life. But the third kind of delay, some people call it God's delay. But really what I really believe it is, is that God's process. Because there's no reason why God holds people back. God's process. Sometimes, watch this, what you call delay can just be a process. A woman is pregnant, has a baby in nine, nine months' time. It's not delay. That's the natural process. A child will walk from age two upward. That's the natural process. A lot of people are not careful because they keep calling process delay. And they put themselves under pressure. And you must be careful that you don't call process delay. Because you'll just be putting yourself under prayer pressure and praying prayers you have no business praying. Where my stuff? You must understand this. Some of you, the issue you are facing is an indomin indomin issue. Just three minutes prayer, done. Some other people, the issue they are facing is what? Is a spaghetti issue. Yes. Please come. Please come. Is a spaghetti issue. Fifteen minutes prayer, they are done. The problem is when indomin person begins to compare himself to spaghetti person. We look alike. The process, the problem we are facing, are they the same? You know, say, ah, but I go to church before her. Just small prayer. Do you know the magnitude of your problem? Do you know your problem is spaghetti or indomie? I wanted to hold this. I'm, I'm giving to him here. Yeah. I want to hold. Praise God. That... 
Yam. Some people's problem is yam. You are, you are going to cook. Your business problem is yam. You are, you are comparing yourself to someone that's doing spaghetti. Beans. <laughs> you pop boy first. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you you pop boy first. You, you pop boy. But see, this is why, this is why in the school of prayer, if you compare yourself to your neighbor, you can get into trouble. Did, did you hear what Jesus Christ said? Jesus Christ told the disciples, he said, can't you just watch with me in prayer for one hour? He said, this issue is one hour prayer. This is a yam issue. It's not indomie prayer. One hour prayer. Stay here. Stay here. He told them another time, he said, this one going not by fasting and prayer. You, you will fast and parboil. Fasting, you use fasting to parboil it. Then you use prayer to walk on it. The, the challenge, the, the, hold on to this. The challenge, this is a challenge. This is a challenge. The challenge is this. People that, people that have beans challenges, that need beans kind of level of prayer, are comparing themselves to people that have spaghetti problems. People that have yam challenges are comparing themselves to people that have spaghetti problems. They say, well, why is God not answering me? My brother, your problem is yam. You soak it. You soak it. Your problem is beans. You pop boy first. Before you even enter, you will spend some time in fasting. You meditate in the world for like 21 days because you know. Let me ask your neighbor, which one is your own? Let me ask your neighbor, which one is your own? Some people, their transactions are transactions are spaghetti transactions. They just get there. Just one day, man, thank you, Jesus. Some people, you, you know. That your transaction is like this. You know, I've been saying, Father, why is my own life? Because we're not the same. When God picked us up, it's not the same. That's why some, some when you're young, some children need lesson teacher. Some don't. Some children need school lesson, lesson teacher, parental coaching. Because of we are all on different level. Stop comparing yourself to somebody else. Face your time in prayer. And I now say, but my brother did this. Do you have the same destiny like him? Glory to God. So, so thank you. Thank you. So, so this is this is the reason. So sometimes, sometimes what you call delay is just process. What you call delay is just process. What one lady was saying to was saying the next level, and how God broke the power of marital delay in their family. Next level is so powerful. I'm telling you, some of the testimonies are mind-blowing. This lady, all the ladies in their house have not been getting married. She was 39. Her younger sister, 35. No one is married. Well, she joined next level. And it's only, she said, I've been joining for like a year. But maybe that's how she needs to process that. Then the word of God just came. By the spirit, I mentioned that name. I described what she, what she was doing. And I said, the Lord has heard you. She said, I wrote it down. He said, a year after, it's a year after, I'm here to testify. On the same day, herself and her younger sister, she was now 40. Her younger sister, 36, they got married the same day. Why didn't they notice them before? Because there was a barrier. But that barrier was taken down by the power of the Holy Ghost. But I'm only saying this because what about if the lady had given up? In fact, she, she said in Israel, she said the reason why it really touched her was because her name was mentioned. So it was a personal thing because she was almost there. She had become negative. I'm only saying that so please do not get negative. Glory to God. I said glory to God. What does process do for us? Number one. What, 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 so why does God allow this process? The first thing process does is that. Number one. Process shows your motive. God uses process to fix your motive. Because sometimes Christians become very smart. They come to prayer when they need something. And God says, I don't want to need something. I want to need me. So when they need a child. Oh my God. When they need a husband, hey, 
but God says, God says, so when it takes six months and the child has not come, then you're like, I, I don't want to pray. Because you were not in love with the person you were praying to. You were in love with whatever you wanted. And God begins to correct your motive. Have you not seen people that, that the moment they didn't get a husband in 2022, they say, I'm tired. I'll never go to church again. God says, look at you. See why you're worshipping me. It's about husband and wife. Have you not seen people before that were threatening God? One time, one lady said to me, he said, Pastor, if God is slow, I know where to go to. I said, hey. I said, hey, you know where to go to? If God is slow. Be because that's what God is waiting for so that you can show that you really have idols. But God wants people like Job that says, even if he slays me, I will serve him. People that will say, I'm not here for things, I'm here for you. That's what God is looking for. That if he slays me, I would, ah! So, one of the things the lady does is that, is it the baby you want or God you want? Is it the approval you want or you want God? The second thing, the second thing the lady does is this. The lady allows God to work on you. Because once things are going so well, you become proud and braggadocious. James chapter 1. Let's look at that quickly. Oh, somebody, are you here? Are you here? James chapter 1. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. Oh, glory to God. Oh, wow. Look at what the Bible says. In verse 3. It says, knowing this, <laughs> knowing this, that, that the trying of your faith, what gets what? It says, when that, that delay is there, there's something that is working out. It's patient. And see what it says in verse 4. It says, and what? Come, come quickly. He says, and let patience do what? He says, let patience do what? This is what he's saying. No, no, no. My, my brother, stay. My brother, stay. This is what he's saying. He says, as you're going through the delay, he said, God is walking patience. So, this, this is a person praying. I'm patient. This is God walking patience. So, as he's praying, God is working. God is working. God, God is working. God is, God, God is working on him. But this is what happens to us. He says, let God walk. Because this is a tendency. And I need you to block me. As God wants to work, you begin to block him. You say, don't walk. God. And God said, you need to pass this to get there. The more you block, the more you are delayed. Some of you, it's not God holding you back. You are just resisting God. He's working on your attitude and mindset. You say, don't walk. You say, God, don't, you don't, don't allow me. You say, and, and God, you, God wants to walk because you need to allow him. How many of you has God been correcting you for two years? And yet you've not changed. He's corrected you about the way you talk. He's corrected about your mindset. We went through an emotional healing session and God pointed out things to you and now you've forgotten what is working on with you. And God has said, allow patience. Allow patience. He's correcting the fact that you need to. He's, some of you have been dealing with you about serving. Some of you have been dealing with you about boldness. You know, um, the lady that came up, you know, Mrs. Adenio, I, I asked her, are you shy? He said, Pastor, we've gone past that now. I said, that's it. I said, that's it. Because there was a time in that journey that God was walking with her and you have a choice either to block it or to allow it. The question that some of you, God is changing the way you think about marriage. He's changing the way you think about finance. Changing things. And you're saying, God, please don't touch that. And God says, well, I'm gentle. When you're ready, I will come back. How many of you have God been dealing with about typhoon here? And every time he tries to touch your, your titan, you, you'll be blocking him. And God says, why are you blocking me? Let me touch what I want. The reason I'm saying this is this. It says, let's patient. Have a way. Who? The last reason why the process of God can be challenging and as good as this. Because I notice in the Bible, very significant, this is huge. This might be one of the biggest reasons why you want to believe the will of God. When Satan brings delay and God allows it, sometimes God allows it because he wants to mess up the devil big time. He wants to use the problem to demonstrate his power. Oh my God. He wants to use the problem to what? Demonstrate his power. So guess what? They told him that Lazarus is sick. God says, Jesus Christ said, oh, let him die first. 
it says, it says, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. The reason why is that if we healed him just now, they'll say it was a small sickness. So, if we went the same way he died, they'll say he didn't really die. He was just in a coma. He just collapsed. God said, God said let's wait for four days. Why four days? He was rotting. The body organs had begun to decompose. He was now smelling. The reason why is that sometimes what the devil planned for delay, God allows it to use to demonstrate his power. He, listen, he allows it to go wrong so that when he does it, nobody can say, I did it. Ah, my goodness. Are you hearing me, somebody? He allows it to go so nobody can say, I did it. <laughs> so, so he allows you to go to the 20s and the 30s and it comes to 40 and that's why you get this great husband so that you will know that it's not beauty. Oh. This is the hand of God. The company where you know the MD and chairman, they will not give you a contract. But the company where you know nobody, that's where they give you a contract so that you will know this is the hand of God. Sometimes God needs to step you aside to show his power. Have you noticed in the Bible? Oh my God. That the women, <laughs> Shabbat not manna, that most of the women in the Bible that had childbirth problem, when they eventually give birth to children, they give birth to giants. Do you know what's in the Bible? Can, can I start with you? Let's start with a woman called Sarah. When Sarah eventually gave birth to a child, she gave birth to Isaac, the promised child. Let's go back to Hannah. When Hannah gave birth to a child, she gave birth to what? Samuel, the prophet. Big Samuel. And another woman called Elizabeth. When Elizabeth, the Bible says, she was stricken in age. When she eventually gave birth to a child, she gave birth to John the Baptist. Maybe the reason why God has allowed the delay is because you are not meant to give birth to ordinary children. You are not meant to give birth to ordinary projects. You are not meant to give birth to ordinary products. You are meant to give birth to something big, something magnificent, something that will change the course of history. If and the one I'm talking about shot, yes. <laughs> you know what that does for me? When I see the light, I get excited. I say, Satan, you just mess with the wrong person because my father will use this to demonstrate his power. He will use this what to demonstrate his power. He will use this what demonstrate his power. Oh, glory to God. I said, glory to God. I said glory to God. Let's close. Joshua chapter 6 verse 1. Our last scripture. Oh glory to God. Wow. God uses the delay to demonstrate his power. So it's not as if he's blind. He just says Satan, do your worst first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make the cancer very big. So by the time we heal it, the doctor will know that there's no problem. Yeah, 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 the, 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 yeah, they said there's no sperm count at all, no egg at all. Did you hear the lady's testimony? They told the lady, you have entered menopause. You can never see your flow again. Not that we can give you a drug. God says, from that place, I will take it up. Yesterday, I met a, on Friday when I came to teach RMC, I met a lady. She came from the Antony Church for RMC. And she said, well, I, just, I will be ungrateful if I don't share this testimony with you. I said, what's the testimony? He said, when you came to Antony Church, I'd not seen my menstrual period for one and a half years. He said, you prayed. He said, in two weeks. He said, I saw my flow. I said, God needed to use you to demonstrate his power. Relax. Satan wants to disgrace you. God wants to mess him up. Hallelujah. So let's close with this. And, and, and this is how we close with this. This is how we close with this. Because this is how we close with it. And, and this is why, see, so I understand faith. But when there is a delay, how do I stay positive? I, I need to stay positive. I understand that. But how do I stay positive? I don't know how to do that. Joshua chapter 6 verse 1. The Bible says in Joshua chapter 6 verse 1. The Bible says, and Jericho was strictly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, none went in. There was, they were meant to take over Jericho, but now there's a delay. The Bible says in verse 2, and the Lord said to Joshua, <laughs> he says, see, I have what? Oh, come on, read with me. He said, what? He says, I have given you the land. It's, it's important for you to know how God talks. No one talks like Jehovah. Every human being says, I will do this for you. I will. God does not say, I will. 
He says, I have given in the past. The reason why is that our God operates in timelessness. So what God does is this. <laughs> Before he talks to you, he goes into your future. But the future is really inside him anyway, praise God. Because there's no future outside God. Then it does it in your future. Then it comes into your present and say, hey, look at what I've done in your future. He says, see, I have given. That's the first thing you have to do. You have to see what God has given you. And how do you do that? When you wake up every morning, don't get up on the bed. Stay three more minutes on the bed. Close your eyes and see your testimony. Close your eyes and see. He says, see, I, not I will give it to you. I have given to you. You, you wake up, you wake up, you just sleep. Oh, wow. Just see the nice marriage you want. See the contract. See the payment that just came into your company account. Oh, Lord. That is super. See, I have given to you. The second thing is this. So, so the second thing says, see, I have given to you. Verse 3. Then it says, you shall come past the city. It says, it says I have given to you, you shall come past the city. Ye men of war, you shall go around the city once, and thou shalt do it six times. Six days. Verse 4 says, and seven priests, and, and this is where it gets powerful. He says, before you go, you're going to take priests with you. Why priests? Why priest? Very powerful. He didn't say you take one priest, you take priest with you. Why priest? The reason why I say priest is this. It was talking about your association. When you want to stay positive, you are going to look for people of like precious faith to stay with you. Not one. People of like precious faith. Because people of like precious faith. They were all priests. They had to be. Seven is the number of completion. Seven priests. You must have a community of people full of faith. How do you stay positive when things are down? Look for people of like precious faith. And that's why if you attend this church, you need to find yourself in a cell. In a small group. Like precious faith. People that can be speaking faith to you. Per se, per se. He said, look for the priest. Why did the priest? So the first thing, the seven priest, like the second about the priest is that every priest must offer what? Sacrifice. So as a priest, what must they offer? Listen to me. This is what I learned from the scripture. The priest does not offer prayers for himself. The first prayer, the priest of the first sacrifice, the priest offers prayers. What how do you stay positive when things are negative? This is how you stay positive. <laughs> Will you receive it? Yes, Please pay attention. When things are negative, look for people in that situation and start praying for them. That's what the priest does. Someone says, why is it in the Bible? I will show you. When Job was in problem, how did he get out of it? He began to pray for his friends. And although his own state had not changed, God healed his friends. And when God restored his friends, God eventually restored him. So I'm believing God for, I'm believing for business breakthrough. You will call your other people that believe for contracts in that same company. You say, I want to agree with you that God will do it for you. Because you're beginning to sow the seed you want to see. That's what the priest does. The, the priest carries sacrifice for the people. The same thing with Abraham. When Abraham did not have a child, the Bible says God told Abraham to pray for Abimelech and God healed Abimelech. Meanwhile, Abraham and his wife were barren. But after that healing, what happened? The reason why is that even in your problem, God does not want to be self-centered. He wants you to be outward focused. Are you here? Oh, glory to God. I wish I had more time to share that with you. So, the first thing is association. The second thing is to pray for other people. The, the, the third thing is that remember the priests are carrying the ark. You must be conscious of his presence. The fourth thing is that because it's the priest, the priest offer not just prayers, they offer sacrifices. You must take giving, you must take offering of sacrifices, very important. Let me just slow down here. And this will have to do that when you have seen nothing, as a priest, you will come and give thanksgiving offerings. You will come and give what? Thanksgiving offerings. And the thanksgiving offerings is not what man will tell you. It's as a priest. These are the things I'm praying for. I have not seen them, but as a priest, I understand spiritual things. That I offer sacrifices. I offer sacrifice. You will give money for PR. It's not done. You will give money for consulting. It's not done. Why don't you say, Father, I'm giving you a thanksgiving an offering. It's an offering of my faith, knowing that you have done this. 
Glory to God. I said glory to God. Thank God that next week Sunday is Thanksgiving. We have the opportunity to demonstrate our faith. This is how you give a Thanksgiving offering. You know. I'm telling you, 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 of course, you know that there's no, most of you will not use envelopes. Some of you see envelope, envelopes. Even on your banking app, don't just transfer. Write it. Lord, I'm thankful, I'm thankful that the contract of this is, already, is mine. It's between you and God. If you are using envelope, don't say the same right. Write on the envelope. Bring your own from home. Write. My dear father, I'm thankful. Because as a priest, I brought forth my fancy nothing. It's for my child. It's going to be well. I'm saying, I'm offering. The same way I'm offering the prayers, I'm offering my thanksgiving. Glory to God. Because the thanksgiving is a language of faith. In fact, the highest form of faith, the highest form of faith is a faith is expressed in thanksgiving. Glory to God. Who? I'm telling you, I mean, last year, one of the things when I saw one of the pastors and I saw me at Package Offering and it, it was a part of, maybe about 500,000 or something like that and they wrote on it and I said, what are, he said, that, he said, Pastor, I'm the one I know I'm thanking God for. But it was a language of faith. It, it's not just something you just give anyhow. No, it's a language of faith in your heart. The last thing is this. I want to read this quickly. The Bible says this. Verse 4. And seven priests shall bear the ark, seven trumpets of the ram horn. It said, and the seventh day they shall come past the city and they shall blow with the trumpets. Question, what is a ram horn? Watch this now. This is what I'm going to close. This is what I'm going to close. Uh, this is very important to you because I've given you steps about the presence of God, about association, about praying for other people, about giving your thanksgiving offering. But I want to talk about the ram horn. First of all, what is the ram horn? One, the horn, the ram that has a horn is the male ram. The female ram doesn't have a horn. Then the second thing is this. You cannot have the horn of a ram without killing the lamb. Yes or no? So the ram horn referred to Jesus Christ because he was the one that died. So when he spoke about the ram horn, what was he talking about? He said, blow the ram horn. He says, when you are negative, keep saying what Jesus Christ said. Keep declaring the victory we have in Jesus. Keep declaring. He says, say it and hear it. Say it and hear it. He said, blow it seven times. What does that mean? This is what it means. When you want to feel negative, you go back to the finished work of Christ. And you say, Lord, Jesus already finished this on the cross of Calvary. Based on what just, I'm not coming based on my own faith. Based on what he has done. I'm declaring this. And you're blowing the ramps. And as you do that, you will see an explosion everywhere. The Bible said they did that. The seventh day, the wall of Jericho came down flat. What is the ram on? You speaking the finished work of Christ Jesus. How do you speak it? I'm a new creation. All things, because of Christ that is in me, I am a new creation. All things have passed away. Because of Christ that is in me, Christ in me is hope of glory. You begin to speak those words. That's the ram on. Shall we pray? I wanted to blow your rams on. You know, some people are still blowing physical horn. We have moved beyond that too. We are in the New Testament. We want to blow Ramson. Oh, my tire. Thank you, Jesus.